So we're going to look at um, some differences between the bony fish and the cartilaginous fish. And then we're also going to look at not details, but the basics of uh, bone formation. Uh, and, and the reference is sort of that the cartilaginous fish came first, that the skeleton uh, of cartilage uh, comes first in the ancestry of the vertebrates and followed by bone. And as we look at the processes that occur during bone formation, even our own bone formation, we find that the process follows uh, a similar sort of mechanism where uh, in one that we're going to look at um, called endochondral ossification, which is normally what we see uh, in the formation of our long bones. Typically, the bone is formed uh, from cartilage first, and then it is it doesn't turn into bone, but it's replaced by bone. So then it's kind of taken away, and then the bone cells, and we'll talk about the bone matrix and uh, osteoblasts, and then they kind of make the bone in place of and replace the, the cartilage. And then some cartilage then remains around the bones or between bones and things like that. So first off, we're just going to look at the, the groups of organisms, look at some of the characteristics they have and some of the things that are um, similar and different about them. So the one, obviously, is that, you know, this here, this one, I've just drawn the skeleton. I haven't really drawn anything else. For this one, I've drawn the kind of the outline of the animal plus the skeleton. And that's partly because this animal is so full uh, of bone, all right, from its skull here, jaw, uh, to, the to the fins, uh, ribs, uh, the vertebra, uh, supporting spine structures here for these other fins. Um, you can pretty much see a fish there. If I were to erase the outline here of this shark, uh, it would be less obvious what it actually was. Um, it'd be potentially you'd see some kind of fin here and you would guess it was most likely some kind of fish, but wouldn't necessarily know. Um, it doesn't have as much uh, bony structures within the body. So what do we have here? Um, a cranium and cranium. The orbits for the eyes Typically, they have the rostrum here in the nose. There's some openings uh, where the organisms can do chemoreception. There, the chondrichthys, the sharks, typically have a whole number of different types of unique sensors, which you would probably get into in an animal biology course. Um, often, some of them are going along the length of their body, uh, but a lot of them are focused really right in the rostrum, at sort of the, to the tip um, of their face end. There are electrical sensors, uh, vibration detector, so they can really sense a lot of things um, from that area. But that's not what we're really talking about now. We're looking at sort of the, the skeleton. Here we have the vertebra. And this is the vertebra here. And then we have some, some fins. Okay, so these are dorsal fins. <laughs> And you can see with both, now the dorsal fins, this, uh, the osteichthys and the particular group um, I'm drawing here as an example, uh, it's from a member called, a, mem a member of a group called the Actinopterygii, which uh, is um, the ray-finned fish versus the Sarcopterygii, which is lobe-finned fish. Uh, we're not going to cover that in this particular course. It's more for a different uh, class. Um, but essentially, we have our, a lot of spines uh, here in the fins. Uh, and so if this were going to be a, a fin you know, of this fish, there'd be a membranous structure surrounding it. But there are all these bony rays, um, that's what they're calling them, sticking up into uh, all the different fins. So we have dorsal fins. Often there are two. Same thing here. There, there are two. Here you can see them attached um, to, this one's directly attached to the vertebra. This is attached to an additional spinal uh, structure. Not the spine is in the spinal cord, but spine is in a, a bony um, plate with little spikes sticking out of it uh, that's attached to the skull here. Um, these are not really articulated with or, or attached uh, to the other parts of the, the vertebra in the chondrichthys. Now, on the ventral side, on the belly side, things are a little bit different. This is our pectoral fin. The front one pelvic, 
And then the furthest back is the anal fin. Here, the furthest back is also the anal fin. But now it's a little bit different. There's kind of sort of two sets of things. What happens in the, the bony fish is that the, the pelvic girdle uh, moves forward like this. So these are actually the pelvic fins. Uh, and this is the pectoral. So the, this fin here, the, the pectoral fin. So the ones on the side uh, of the fish's body uh, are the pectoral fins. And then right below them, you would actually see sticking up, up the animal's body, then the, the pelvic fins. They're almost like lined up with one another. So generally, the, that's you know, sort of the, the skeletal broad uh, comparison. Um, here we have gill arches. Uh, and there are going to be some gill arches here. Um, now, one of the different, some of the differences between this group, these groups, this one has a, a perculum, which is uh, a gill covering, and that gill covering um, has mus musculature that can allow it to open and close, so this fish can stay in place without moving, and by opening and closing these perculum on the sides of the animal they can suck water in so creating a vacuum essentially into their mouth passing over their gills and then out uh, through the, the slits on the side most of the chondrichthys they don't have an operculum they have the slits here and then they have openings in the sides uh, of their body um, but water as it flows in through the mouth to go over the gills only really happens then if the animal's moving, which is why a lot of times they're, they're moving all the time. And typically when they stop moving, their um, blood oxygen level drops. So most of them have to be fairly active all the time. If not, in some of the chondrichthys, like the skates and rays, some of them um, live in the sediment and they will actually have structures that can open and close and move and do some pumping and pushing water across the gills. But, for, but many of them don't have that structure. So we already talked about the, the, the bony structures. Uh, the other is that um, for the fish, they will often have some type of, the bony fish will have some type of swim bladder. Uh, and there's no swim bladder here. Now both groups covering their epidermis will be scales, but there are different types of scales. The scale structure something like this. Uh, it's called a placoid scale. Is what we find uh, in the chondrichthys. In addition to that, if you kind of turn it the other way, um, look at it sideways, um, it looks a lot like a tooth. Uh, and that's because the teeth are derived from these scales you know, as well. In most of the bony fish, uh, we have a different type of scale. So there are these overlapping, so sometimes these round, you know, overlapping scales like this. Uh, and, and some of them then have like a little, little teeth on it like this. And so these are called cycloid scales or what, when they have the little teeth like this, there are combs, you know, they're the tenoid scales. This isn't that important right now. Again, I'm talking about a few things that are more for an animal biology class or um, ichthyology course. And as we start to get into those other uh, higher level uh, studies of animal biology, but this is just sort of more introduction. And again, we're focusing on this, the skeletal structure and then a few differences between the groups. Um, so those are kind of just the main differences we'll kind of point out right now. Uh, and we'll kind of now talk about the, the bone. So this whole group, the chondrichthys, builds a skeleton of cartilage. So the cranium, the vertebra, uh, other bony structures are actually not bone, they're cartilage. So cartilage uh, is mostly made up of collagen, protein. And that's kind of the main structure. It is not uh, mineralized or minerals don't associate with it. And the process that we um, are going to study is ossification. So they're not ossified, so they're not turned into bone. And they stay, stay very flexible. Um, although they can be fairly hard and rigid depending on uh, other sorts of factors, uh, their thickness and, and, and other, of other chemical properties. But um, 
but they generally maintain a lot of uh, elasticity and flexibility. When bone is created in other animals, often we get this endochondral ossification process where, and we can say this is typically happens say in like long bones you know, first, where the bone is built of cartilage And it's sort of the model. It's like, this is going to become the bone and this is the structure and this is what it's gonna look like and this is the location. And then blood vessels penetrate into that structure. Those blood vessels bring with them these different types of mesenchymal cells. So see this term. So this is a type of stem cell, but it's already been somewhat determined. So that means that uh, it's a cell that could become a variety of different types of cells, but not any type of cell. For example, this cell at this point in time can't become a nerve cell. It's not, not possible, it's not what it is. It's already been determined to go along a different path, but it be can become bone and blood uh, cells along this, this way. And so these mesenchymal cells will then uh, differentiate and then they'll get signals um, from certain transcription factors, and then they will start to become one cell type or another. For example, uh, one of these cell types are called osteoblasts. And they will lay down uh, something called a bone matrix protein. And then what will happen are that uh, minerals Um, like calcium um, will calcium phosphate will bind and that's in, in an ultra simplistic way um, the process of ossification now the thing is the cartilage is still there and it's made by you know other types of cells called chondrocytes. So the chondrocytes kind of come in first. They make the cartilage structure. Some structures stay cartilage. They, they aren't replaced uh, or removed. And then other structures are removed. Typically it's these cells uh, called the well, osteoclast. I didn't write it on here, but an osteoclast An osteoclast removes material, the osteoblast releases or secretes material to make the bone. So this one, the osteoclast is involved in sort of restructuring, um, to taking things away, whereas the osteoblast is depositing uh, material there to create the bone and the ossification process. Uh, and then there are living cells that live within inside the bone, which is, is a living tissue, and those are the bone cells, so site, bone cell, osteocyte. The osteocytes are the, the cells living then inside the bone. That's one mechanism. And that happens for, again, mostly, um, even in our bodies, the bones that we call the long bones take place uh, in that way. That's how they form. There's another process uh, that is found, say, in the, the bones of our skull, uh, which is called intramembranous ossification which is where instead the cartilage doesn't form first. Uh, there's sort of a, a different type of matrix that forms first um, that's much thinner. And then the si similar sorts of process happens within the osteoblasts come in, secrete the bone matrix, and then the, those cells form. This is usually a much faster process, the intramembranous, because you don't have to build the whole thing out of cartilage and then take it away and replace it with the bone. Um, it's more of a membranous structure that's laid down first, and then the mineralization process happens on top of it. So that one's called intramembranous ossification. Again, usually more for, uh, say, flat bones, like the bones of the skull, versus the other bones of the skeleton. So long bones, so bones of the appendages, you know, our arms and legs and these other sorts of bones um, are mostly formed through endochondral ossification where they're set down first in cartilage and then replaced. And so we can see that's, you know, 
that doesn't happen in the chondrichthys they just stay cartilage that's that's it but ancestrally that's kind of how we see some aspects of this that uh, the first skeletal system is starting to be formed out of cartilage and then the ossification process happens to toughen it up um, and allow them to do a variety of, of different things and so for both protecting the brain protecting the spinal cord and then adding strength to the appendages when they have to start to bear um, the weight you know of gravity as organisms start to move from water up onto land that will become uh, even more important so um, again that's just an introduction a little bit to uh, differences between bony fish and cartilaginous fish with a few characteristics not a lot of them but just a couple and again a, a very short overview of um, some of the process that forms bone um, which would be covered in a lot more detail in uh, other sorts of courses but this is just to give you an idea of some of the main terms uh, and the main processes involved